who's the ranking member of the subcommittee on Asia, the Pacific, Central Asia, and nonproliferation for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Before I get to my first question, I would remind my dear friend from the Commonwealth of Virginia, who has been an extraordinary uh, leader in uh, never recognizing uh, the Russians uh, uh, stealing Crimea, essentially, um, along with my, myself, but relative to their actions, their words, and they always say actions speak louder than words, and the Obama administration uh, provided meals ready to eat, MREs, and blankets, and uh, what the Ukrainians were requesting was lethal weaponry, and it was actually the Trump administration that provided lethal weapons, so the, the actions, I think, speak louder than the words. Um, Secretary would, would my friend just yield for a, a, a compliment? Very, very quick. I just want to, I want to thank you for being a stalwart on Crimea. We both of us said back in 2014, never, and uh, and that became enshrined in appropriations legislation and others. So thank you for your leadership in this matter. Thank you very much, and right back at you, um, Secretary Sherman. Uh, in the lead up uh, to the most recent Russian in invasion, I say recent obviously because they invaded. Uh, Crimea and uh, the Donbas region. Um, the Ukrainians' top request was for anti-aircraft uh, weapons. Uh, we'd been asking the administration for months if the U.S. had Stinger missiles to send Ukraine, uh, but we're told we did not have an exportable version in stock. Yet it's now being reported that the U.S. has approved the direct delivery of Stinger missiles to Ukraine as part of a recent package. Can you explain why it took Kyiv uh, being on the verge of being overrun by Russian forces to determine the U.S. could indeed directly export stingers to Ukraine? I'm going to defer to my DOD colleague, Assistant Secretary Mayer, sure. about the technology of stinger missiles, which he probably understands better than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. do think it is important uh, to emphasize uh, that we can only go so far in this open session to talk about specific weapon systems. Well, let's go right to it, because i got limited time. Y yes. Your Congressman, so there's uh, technical <laughs> changes that have to be made for uh, an export version. Um, I won't get into any more details than that, but this has been an ongoing conversation, as Deputy Secretary Sherman said, about a whole range of different support to Ukraine. All right, well, we need to do everything possible to get them what they need as, as quickly as possible. Well, let me ask you this. Um, we've all been watching on our, our televisions and feeling helpless ab about this, this 40-mile-long uh, procession of lethal Russian tanks and military vehicles and, and you name it, heading for Kyiv, and we know they're going to be using those to bludgeon and murder women, children, civilians, uh, anything that's, uh, that breathes, basically, if it, once it gets there. Um, a number of members, both in the House and the Senate, have been urging the administration to at least consider, you know, we've got decommissioned, uh, surplus, mothballed, uh, to us obsolete uh, planes, you know, uh, some, the, the A-10 Warthog, tank killers. Um, and essentially, my understanding is, got zero response from the administration. For months, they've been suggesting, let's get these over to help the Ukrainians. Uh, they're not there. Uh, they've got no way uh, at this point to stop those tanks from coming down that they know are going to be killing their people. Why the heck have we not done something? Why was the administration silent on this? What the heck's going on? So again, Congressman, um, I think there's a critical element of what we can supply and what the Ukrainians can absorb here. Um, some of the platforms you're talking about, they have no expertise in. So I think this has been an ongoing conversation of which uh, many of the capabilities we've uh, applied and supplied to them are ones that they can absorb and then put into the fight. Well, I, I, it's just, uh, I think it's, uh, it's incredible to me that we haven't found a way to do this. And the number of people's lives that would have been saved if we could have planned better earlier. Um, this is all, the blood is on Putin's hands, but uh, the incompetence of this administration is breathless. Let, let me, I'm, I'm almost out of time. One last thing, I happen to be the co-chair of the Congressional Taiwan Caucus, and obviously the Russians, uh, excuse me, the, the Chinese have been watching, and one thing they've probably learned from this is when they go after Taiwan, they better go very quickly 
So I hope to heck this administration is thinking very seriously about uh, the defense of Taiwan, a key ally and a key part of the world uh, for us. And uh, gentlemen's time has expired. I now recognize Representative David Cicilline for 